हेलो गाइज एंड वेलकम बैक टू अनदर वीडियो फ्रॉम माय यूट्यूब चैनल दैट इज विपिन शर्मा बायोलॉजी ट्यूटोरियल्स एंड टुडे वी आर कंटिन्यूइंग द एपिथिलियल टिश्यू वी हैव ऑलरेडी रेड द एपिथिलियल टिश्यू पार्ट वन एंड द लिंक ऑफ दैट वीडियो विल बी इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बिलो इफ यू हैव नॉट वॉच दैट पर्टिकुलर वीडियो दैन गो एंड वॉच सो दिस इज एपिथिलियल टिश्यू पार्ट टू वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ एपिथिलियल टिश्यू दैट इज दैट इज सिंपल एंड कंपाउंड सो सम क्यूबॉइडल एंड कोलमनार सेल्स क्यूबॉइडल एंड कोलमनार सेल्स गॉड स्पेशलाइज for what particular purpose they are specialized since they have two main function that is secretion and absorption as we have discussed in the previous video so their function is to secretion and absorption so for secretion they are modified into different kind of glands so the cuboidal and columnar cells which are specialized for secreting different kind of secretions therefore these are known as glands may be of different types such as unicellular and multicellular since the unicellular gland will only contain uni means one cell only one cell that is isolated cell for example the goblet cells of alimentary canal which usually secretes mucus that is goblet cells and multicellular multi means more than one cellular means cell so the multicellular glands will contain more than one cell that is the cluster of cells for example salivary glands the salivary gland is a kind of multicellular gland which is formed from the interaction of different kind of cells so on the basis of mode of pouring their secretion pouring how a particular gland will send its secretion to different parts of body whether it is via some ducts tubules or it will pour its secretion directly into the blood on this particular basis the different kind of glands are divided into two types that is the exocrine glands and the endocrine glands the exocrine glands will secrete most of the chemicals in our body such as mucus saliva ear wax that is known as cerumen oil different kind of oils so these contains uh, sebaceous glands sudorific glands salivary glands goblet cells milk that is mammary glands and different kind of digestive enzymes which are produced by different kind of glands present in the digestive tract such as pancreas and other kind of glands and different kind of cell products and what is the most important thing about exocrine glands that exocrine glands will pour their secretion via ducts or tube they have different kind of tube or ducts like structure and from these ducts or tubes the secretion of these glands will be transported from one part to other part of body if you talk about the endocrine glands then there are no ducts the ducts are absent so how it is you know transfer from one place to another place since ducts are absent so the secretion which is known as hormones all the glands that are secreting hormones are known as endocrine glands such as thyroid gland parathyroid gland hypothalamus all these are kind of endocrine glands they directly secrete their secretions into the blood they pour their secretion into the blood fl blood flow by which it is contained from one place to another with the blood flow so this is the difference between unicellular and multicellular glands and exocrine and endocrine glands which are different type of glands which are formed from cuboidal and columnar cells which got specialized to do different kind of functions or to secrete different kind of chemicals in our body so this is all about simple epithelium now let move towards the compound epithelium what is compound epithelium in compound epithelium we have discussed in uh, previous lecture that it is multi layered so here you can watch that we have shown three layers so it has having three layers that is more than one layer therefore it is known as the compound epithelium because it is multi layer and since it is multi layer therefore its role in secretion and absorption will be much lesser since it is multi layer therefore it is thick therefore its most important function is to provide protection since it is thick so main function is to provide protection against mechanical and chemical stress mechanical stress is why a Uh, stress via stretching something or some kind of mechanical force is added to a particular tissue then it will prevent or resist 
that particular tissue from mechanical stress and chemical stress when we implement or use some kind of chemicals on a particular part of body then they will use to protect it for example in alimentary canal we know that in alimentary canal or digestive tract there is an acid in our stomach that is HCl which is very concentrated where having very low pH so since it is very concentrated this is very harmful and it can degrade different kind of tissues or cells present in stomach but it does not because there is lining of different kind of tissues which protect it from chemical stress and simply when we talk about the most important and the most common compound epithelium that is skin it, it will provide us the protection from different kind of mechanical stress we know that very well so what are the examples a superintendent of police from BSP party which is a very common party in uh, UP so you can also use it as a hypothetical word that BSP a superintendent of police from BSP party has won the elections okay so SP from BSP where S simply means skin P means pharynx B means buccal cavity S means stomach and P means pancreas it means that skin and most of the part of alimentary canal all these are from the digestive tract that is pharynx uh, buccal cavity stomach pancreatic duct so all these are lined by compound epithelium let us take a review once again the skin which provide protection against mechanical stress buccal cavity pharynx inner lining of duct of inner lining that's most important of salivary glands and pancreatic ducts which carry the pancreatic juice from one place to another place that is from pancreas to intestine for its function that is the digestion of food so now we have to talk about junctions different kind of junctions are present in our body and various kind of tissues tissues are formed from the aggregation or the joining of different kind of cells from the grouping of different kind of cells and these cells are joined to each other via some sort of junctions okay so what are those junctions? epithelium cells or tissues have very less intercellular space because these are condensely packed these are very condensely packed like pavement epithelium that is the tiles of floor so they have very little intercellular space since it have very little intercellular space therefore they are much strengthened because they have very little intercellular space so these are these are most, uh, more connected to each other so different kind of junctions are present in our body so what is the function of junction junction provide both structural and functional links between individual cells if these are two cells then the particular intercellular junction that is a junction between two cells will provide structural as well as functional link between individual cells it is a structural it has different kind of structural components as well as it has various functions for example if we will talk about gap junction then it has a function of transferring different kind of ions or small molecules from one cell to another cell so this is the structural and functional link between various kind of cells so there are majorly three type of junctions present in different kind of tissues what are these the first one is tight junction as the name indicate tight tight means it will stop leaking of a particular substance if two cells are packed really tight then there are very less chance of leaking this is known as tight junction adhering junction adhering as the name indicates adhering simply means to stick so the cementing or the tendency to keep the neighboring cells together that is to adhere them to stick them with each other is known as adhering junction and gap junction so gap junction here a word comes that is gap so it has a little bit gap which facilitate the adjoining cells to communicate by joining their cytoplasm it will join different kind of cells and it will join their cytoplasm via some means so that they can transfer ions small molecules 
and sometimes big molecules it will not pass the large molecules all the time there are some cases in which large molecules can also pass through these junctions but the cases are very severe they mostly passes ions as well as small molecules through themselves so this is about the epithelial tissue part 2 in which we have discussed about the remaining part of simple epithelium all the portion of compound epithelium as well as different kind of junction that is tight adhering and gap so i hope that this particular video is going to help you a lot in your examination guys thank you so much for watching this video and if you really like this video then hit like button and if you are new and watching my video for the very first time then hit the like button guys thank you so much